These are images of microorganisms, the tiny form of, of life that we can't see with our naked eye. Viruses, bacteria, and archaea. They're the most abundant and diverse organisms on Earth, and they cover every nook and cranny of our body, our buildings, and our cities. Most of you, when you think about microbes, probably think about the bad ones, like MRSA or HIV or anthrax. But the majority of microbes are good for us. Our bodies, just like any ecosystem, rely on our microbes to survive. Our microbes protect us from germs and pathogens. They allow us to get nutrients from our food, and they also boost our immune system. And recent evidence suggests that they even influence our moods, our levels of stress and anxiety and depression. So if you're feeling fantastic today, like I am, you might want to thank your microbes, <laughs> and you might want to thank your mother as well, because、um, we get a, a majority of our microbes come from our mother when we're born, and we also get our microbes from the food that we eat, and from the people that we spend time with, our friends, and the people in subways. If you're high-fiving them on the way down an escalator. <laughs> And we also get our microbes from our primary habitat, which is buildings. All of us are going to spend at least 90% of our lives indoors. And while we're indoors, we frequently, continuously come into contact with microbes that we breathe in and that we、um, touch on surfaces. Something that I've been interested in, given how important microbes are to our well-being. Is how we manage microbes in our buildings, where we spend so much of our time. And to explain what I've learned in recent years, I'm going to make an analogy of a garden, a microbial garden that is indoors. So our techniques for gardening microbes indoors today loosely follow four basic rules. The first rule is that you want to keep all microbes out of your building. You want to quarantine the building, and we have modern buildings today that are hermetically sealed. And examples of this, of the way building has changed, is we now have、um, operable windows that are replaced with elaborate air conditioning systems. And filtration systems that are designed to keep out native microbes that are outdoors, the ones that commonly grow on plants and live in the dirt and live in our waterways, and we don't want them getting inside of our buildings. And the second rule or principle is that we put doors on our buildings and allow people to come inside buildings and plant in our gardens. What I'm referring to as invasive microbes, and these are microbes that、um, live on our bodies, they're on our skin, they're、um, in our mouth. Every human being that walks into a building in one hour, they contribute 37 million bacteria to the air. That's as many bacteria as the number of people that are currently living in the state of California. And we contribute microbes to the air by shedding directly from our own body, and we also kick up microbes from surfaces that were left behind by other people that were in the building. Our third basic rule is to keep a static environment for our garden. So we keep a very narrow band of temperature and relative humidity. We don't allow for daily environmental changes or seasonal changes indoors, and we maintain this thermal comfort zone for us because we want to be able to hang out in our underwear, even if it's snowing outside indoors. But think about this from the perspective of a microbe. What we're doing is we're creating an environment that selects for what I think of as an urban type of microbe that really thrives living in this homogeneous environment. And the fourth rule that we follow indoors is that reg you regularly want to kill everything in the garden. 
And we do this indoors by relentlessly using antimicrobial cleaning products and sterilizing surfaces indoors. And when you think about this, this really is a form of microbial genocide because what we're doing is we're killing the good microbes along with the bad. So if we had a vegetable garden outside, we would never kill all of the plants because we wanted to get rid of one weed. And that's effectively what we're doing indoors. And when you clear out a bunch of organisms from an ecosystem, what you do is you make space for weedy and fast-growing organisms to come and colonize those spaces because there's nothing there to compete with them. What are the consequences of this way that we manage microbes indoors? We don't know yet. People are just starting to learn about this, but I'm willing to speculate on what I think is happening. Humans have been around for hundreds of thousands of years, but this era of modern buildings that are hermetically sealed, environmentally constant, um, cleaned on very regular um, on a very regular basis, this has been around only for about 60 years, and I believe what we're breeding indoors. Are growing as a microbial、um, monoculture, and when you think about our bodies, we probably haven't evolved to be able to function very well in this type of microbial environment. And there's a lot of evidence that has been published recently that suggests that many of the ways of modern living may be affiliated with the rise of antibiotic resistance. And the rise in autoimmune disorders that we all face in the developed world, like asthma and allergies. I've recently been collaborating with both biologists and architects, including Brendan Bohannon and Charlie Brown at the University of Oregon, to understand how building design impacts the types of microbes that grow indoors. And we recently conducted a study at the Lillis Business Complex at the University of Oregon. This is what Lilith looks like from the perspective of a human, and this is what it probably looks like from the perspective of a microbe flying around in the atmosphere. This is an infrared image that shows differences in heat on the building, and microbes are known to be very sensitive to heat. And this is what Lilith looks like from the perspective of an architect. So what we did in this building is we were very interested in Lilith because it's a silver lead certified building, and we wanted to know. Does green building design influence microbes in a positive or negative way? So what we did was, on the first floor of this building, we ran and operated the building as it was designed. And what that, what that meant was, we we let outdoor air enter the building through louvers. And on the second floor of the building, we manipulated the way it was operated, and we forced air to go through mechanical ventilation systems before they reached the classroom. Or the, all of the classrooms that we studied. So this is our, these are our results. These are hot off the press. This is data that's never been、um, shown before. We just got these results back last week. What you're looking at is the first and second floor of the Lilith Business Complex, and you'll see that there's an ind- indicator scale on this diagram where the pink denotes air samples that we took. That had micro, microbial DNA that looks very similar to what's found in and on humans, and the blue indicates、um, air samples with microbial DNA that looks very similar to what you might find out outside, for example, in dirt. And what you'll see is that on the first floor of the building, which is Operated according to these lead、um, standards, where air was coming in directly from outside, that air looks more like the outside. And the、um, second floor of the building, the air looked very human-like. So these scientific results are intuitive, but they clearly show that we do have some control over the types of microbes that we're growing indoors. What does this all mean? Today we have landscape architects that design outdoor spaces and groundskeepers whose job it is to maintain this,、um, these outdoor spaces over long periods of time. And the uncharted territory here is 
thinking about microbes in a new way and understanding how to grow the types of good microbes that we want indoors, so that we can train a new type of architect, an interior landscape architect, who can design healthy indoor gardens. And we're also going to need a new flavor of building managers. That that I'm thinking of as interior groundskeepers that can、um, help maintain healthy buildings and healthy people. Thank you very much. Thank you.